Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this tutorial we're going to talk about Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation or the force of gravitation between two objects. Here's a practice problem. Jack stands two meters from Jill and Jack has a mass of 50 kilograms. So I'll kind of just draw these two people real quick. So we got Jack and we have Jill. Okay, so Jack's about 50 kilograms, and Jill's about 40 kilograms. And they are two meters apart. So whether Jill likes it or not, uh, she is attracted to Jack somehow, but in the physics sense. Uh, so Jack will be happy to hear that she's at least maybe attracted to him somehow. So in order to uh, do a calculation like this, we need to use the force of gravitation between two object equation. Again, Newton's uh, law of gravitation. Um, and the letters would be G, and then we got two masses, M1, M2. And then after you multiply those three things, you divide it by the distance between the two objects squared. So in all our tutorials, before we actually start calculating away, I'd like to go over the uh, terminology associated with the force of gravitational attraction and the units that uh, apply to the equation as well. So here's on this screen we see the equation and we see symbols, we see uh, units and the ter uh, working definitions or terminology for all the uh, symbols associated with the equation. Feel free to take time and stop the video and take notes if you need to. So let's go over the equations. So we get the force of gravity is equal to some constant g uh, multiplied by the masses and then divided by the distance between the objects squared. So for in order to solve a physics problem, we need to make sure we know what it, the units are for each symbol. So force is newtons. G, it's a a lot of units here, but actually we don't need to worry about that because if we're calculating force, we know it's going to be in newtons. Uh, but it would be a combination of kilograms and meters so that they would cancel out and give you newtons. But the important thing is to know what the the actual number is. Uh, there's just a, a rough value for it. It's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. A lot of zeros in there. Uh, you have 2 kilograms there for each mass and then your distance and distance in physics is always measured. Standard unit is always meters. And here's our working definitions um, for each one of those terms. All right, so the next thing we want to do in solving this problem is having some kind of system of organizing the data in a problem. I like to use what I call the circle label method. So as I read through the problem, I look for units. And I circle the units, and then I match them up with the letter in the equation. So again, in order to do this calculation, you do need to know the units and how they match up with all the, the um, symbols in your equation. So two meters, we got meters, we know that's distance. Kilograms, we know that's mass, and that's jack, so we need to make sure that's M1, and we'll give the other object. We have kilograms here, so we circle that, and then label it with um, mass again. And then what is the force? So we're looking for the force of gravity, and we know that's going to be in newtons. So now that we've uh, collected our data, the uh, next thing I like to do is organize it in uh, what I call just a little T-bar table here. Where on the left side we put your knowns, and on the right side we put our unknowns. Um, assuming having some kind of uh, system to solve any of your physics problems that you have to take on is um, makes it more useful, especially when you get to the more difficult ones. So I always like to do the circle label method, and then I put them in a table. Uh, when that applies. So on the left side here we got our distance, we got our masses. I probably could put G there, that's part of our data. And then our unknowns are the force of gravity, and no, those are in newtons. So once you put this in a table, it should be easy to see exactly where all the values go. So we got our G, we got our M1, we got our M2, and then our distance right here, we got to not forget to square that. Uh, that's your x to the 2 button in your calculator. 
All right, so you got to be real careful with this calculation. I recommend you might even do it twice, especially um, on a test. And if you do that, you end up with 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. So not much there attraction, not much attraction there, Jack. So um, uh, not to worry either, Jill. So we got 0 0.3, 0 0.000000, a lot of zeros there with a 3.3 at the end.